guys and welcome to something epic for the channel. Check this out, the wizard's lizard. I was actually approached by the game developers the other day and given a copy prior to the actual game going on sale on Steam of course. But uh, I'm recording it now because I've done a bit of research on the game beforehand and uh, you know I obviously want to be kind of good at the game before I start playing so let's just double check the settings of course. I can actually make the game full screen, but I don't think the aspect ratio is going to be fitting for widescreen, so I could just play it like this. Okay, so you've got a number of achievements you can unlock too. They're obviously incomplete. And uh, there's a number of characters you can unlock during the game too, so let's just go ahead and do that. Let me just turn the game volume up ever so much. I don't know if it's going to be loud or not. Okay, let's go. This game's pretty epic. It's like a roguelite game. <clears throat> Um, we've got one character to start off with. There's no point randomizing it. Well, we could do, but it's always going to give us the one character anyway. And here we go. Move with left stick or analog. Here we go. Let's find out what the story is. Press A to interact. So this is my wizard, I assume. I'm about to finish this magic potion. I will. It will protect us from death. Oh. Ah, we've done it. With the magic potion, we've mastered death. Okay, and so you did lay calm over my domain. Death, you no longer have any power over us. Silence, death is far from the worst thing that can happen to you, mortal. Come to my crypt and I will show you my meat. Okay, so Daph is not very happy with our wizard. It's kind of faking Daph, I guess. Where is this stuff? Can I blow any of this stuff up? Okay, okay let's go. Okay, attack with your right analog stick. Um, press X to place a totem, press Y to use Soul Blast, B to dash. Okay, this dash. Okay, so here's the weapons then, I gotta pick them up. I was a bit derpy then, so that's totem, and then that. Okay, so we got a nice little dash here, and then... Okay, that's nice, that's cool. Let's just break the barrels then. Okay, a good thing about this, I'm probably going to say it a bit too early on, is that there are villagers you can kind of save in the game. Uh, when our run comes to an end, it just allows us to have more money to start off the next run. So there's a progression, which is pretty cool. A lot of people are going to compare this to the Binding of Isaac 2, which is kind of, you know, it's fair enough. But it does actually take the genre of gaming into its own play. And uh, it does kind of remind me more of the old school Zelda than anything else. What's this guy going to say? Raga! Hello, little one. What happened to your master, the wizard? Oh no, wait. You want to save him? Well, right. He'll be at the death script. It's dangerous to... Oh, take my stuff. Okay, whatever. Probably said that totally derpy. Okay, so we got the museum lobby. Death has cast a curse on us. The museum's precious artifacts are now lost in the consistency... Consist... Cons... Constantly changing dungeon mazes. Check back here to see your accomplishments. Um, you want to save the wizard? Head south and take the townspeople. Okay, fair enough. I actually like the controls on here too. A lot of people who play the Binding of Isaac use the keyboard and mouse, but I think this is pretty cool. They're all set up nicely. I think the dash is going to cool down. Yeah, it's going to cool down. Right, yeah. Is there anyone in here? Sometimes these, like, drop loot, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should head south. Who knows? Where is this? Hall of Patrons! Of course! This was, um... This was on Kickstarter, this game, so... That probably says why. Hall of Artifacts. So, these are the kind of things I found, I guess. Contains trap souls. You can collect trap souls throughout the game. Anyway, let's just go south and try and get the the wizard. We're probably not going to do that today. These are the different types of weapon unlocks you can get in the game. Loads of nice little perks. 
Um, just want to say now, guys, that this is going to be kind of first impression sort of review, I guess. Well, it can't be a review, but first impressions. And uh, I think we're going to do these in a session of episodes, I guess. Uh, something nice and laid back for the channel, of course. I may actually give away a copy of this game too in a few traps, so to make sure you stay available for that. Okay, we've got some gold and a chest thing here. Can I talk to this guy? You start your journey, head east to the cemetery, be careful. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> head east, and the fight is going to commence. Just making sure I break everything here. And there's a lot of different sort of uh, monsters in this game too that I need to keep an eye out for because they have different types of attacks and stuff. Uh, breaking the barrels, of course, because we want to get as much epic stuff as we can. Oh yeah, that hurt. The thing about this game, though, guys, is that um, uh, we actually can survive death. We'll actually be in ghost form. That relates to what actually happened with uh, the wizard actually making that potion, and then death, like, not not liking him because uh, he kind of, you know, he fools death with his potion, so. Death obviously took him away. These are kind of like graves. You can kind of <clears throat> farm the zombies. Probably a good thing to farm these guys. Uh, maybe walk over here and then blow that up. And walk over here again. The actual graves do vanish after a while, but you can farm them very nicely. Get some nice drops as well. And some of the perks we can get, like, allow our sword to, like, shoot faster and stuff like that. This health there, do we need it? Yeah. Oh, wow, that actually only gives five health back, that did. So health is kind of abundant, I guess. Or not abundant, but maybe it's just not as, you know, it's not as fruitful as it would be in other games. Okay, let's just keep going anyway. We don't really need to farm these rooms, but if we want to, we can just go over the graves like so. And, you know, perk gives... We have a chance to grow a bit of gold like that, so we'll save that for another time, I guess. I think priority right now is to just show you guys the game, introduce you to it, I guess. Let's farm these gravestones up, though. We'll do these ones, of course. I mean, we could just continue walking if we need be. But these zombies are pretty. Can I shoot as I run? These take daggers to the face. Very nice. I was watching the Northern Lion play this the other day, and um, I noticed he wasn't using the dash as much, but we do have a totem. How do I put that on? Why? No, that's a special attack. And if you put a totem down like this, it actually shoots in like multiple directions. So it comes in handy if we ever get into a bit of a clusterfuck, if you know what I mean, if there's a lot of people around here. Same with the other type of attack too, I guess. And as you can see, there are projectiles from the other types of, uh, I guess I'll call them mobs for now, but yeah, there are other types of projectiles that come off the other monsters. <clears throat> nice bit of gold. What is this? Oh, some potions. Well, potion of money. And then there's like little references to, like old school Zelda. As you can see, the spike thing at the bottom here. Maybe it might fly at me if I... No, but there are like spikes in like the old school Zelda. Even in the new ones, like Ocarina of Time, of course, when they kind of fly towards you. Okay, so we found a shop. Sometimes these chests can be fakes. No, it's not a fake one, but we do have a lead breastplate. The reason why I sound like I'm struggling to read at the moment is because um, my microphone stand broke recently, so I've got a new one, but it's really high in front of me. Let's buy this. Book of Magic. No idea where it does, but it will go into like the Hall of Fame stuff, I guess, at some point. Uh, I'm assuming that's the lead um, chest plate we just picked up just then, so that's going to be kind of cool. It's going to help us out a bunch. And something... I never really played a lot of Binding of Isaac, even though the game is pretty good. These owls like fly at you if you hit them. So, you know, hit them at a distance. Something I never really played a lot of Binding of Isaac, so I never really adjusted to this type of, uh, you know, play style, but, you know, I think I'm doing pretty good. You know, weave in and out, of course. Always be on the move if you can. I think that's probably a good 
good thing to do. Always be on the move. And like I said earlier, we don't need to be quite focused on grinding these zombies at the moment because I just want to put, you know, just put this up on the channel, sort of give my opinions on it. And so I might as well just start off talking about it now. A lot of people are comparing this to the Bind of Isaac and saying the game's got a terrible art style to it. Um, it's a 2D game, of course. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the game has got a terrible art style purely because, um, well, what, what do you expect? What do you expect? Seriously, no? What, what would anyone expect? You know? Take it as it is. I mean, some people are saying there could be some more animation sprites for the enemies and stuff like that because, you know, some things are flying around and... Like me throwing this dagger, it's like, it's a simple one, two, it's two sprites. And then walking is, you know, a little bit of a wobble with your hands and... Seriously, does the art style really come down to uh, good playability? I shouldn't have ate that then, oh well. So let me know in the comments, what makes a great game? The art style? The playability? I, I think I'm having a lot of fun with this. I could potentially play this for a long time off camera with some friends. And it looks like we've done Cemetery 1. So let's keep going. <clears throat> we do want to rescue... Uh, might as well get all the money we can. We do want to rescue some of the villagers of course because Def actually took those with him we got a soul orb, a little bit of gold in here so when we rescue the villagers like say we die for example next time we come back we will have um, a little bit of foot up in the game where is this? oh it's just a flying thing and there's obviously a puzzle here too as you can see some of the ghosts actually go through this and I'm thinking if I do become a ghost by dying um, what was that switch for? If I do become a ghost, I may be able to pass through this. These ghosts in this room as well, guys, they actually, um, if I die and become a ghost, I'll have to fight these. So as you can see, you could kind of see into the other dimension, if that makes sense. And I'm going to buy this for the sake of it. I'm assuming there's a, there's a map for the rooms. Um, blueprint explosive totem. Can I look in my inventory? I do not have an inventory to look into, but that's going to allow us to potentially have a new totem. As you can see, the, the items of fame and the hall of fame we saw at the beginning, there's quite a few unlocks on here. And I'm going to blow... might as well blow these up because it's going to be terribly dangerous for me to like try and negotiate this room, I guess, when things are trying to fight me. Should I blow that one up too? And then the cobwebs obviously slow you down. That's very obvious. Thing. Another switch there. And there's another one here. Did I just spawn in some evilness? Maybe. Well, both the switches are down. Maybe it opened a gate somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. And there's like fans in this room too. And the fans actually push you around. So you have to be very cautious. I think these guys potentially... Yeah, they... I'm stuck. I I am actually stuck in this right now. I'm I I am stuck. I can't even. I can't move at all. Damn. I can't. I dash. B for dash. Whoa! I was stuck. I was pushing. I was grinding so hard to get out of that. And he's really hurting me. I've got 40 health as well. Unfortunately, this chest might be a mimic. No, it's not a fake. But we've got a ranger's cap. This actually might allow us to have a better range on our weapon. And this owl is the angry owl. He gets angry when you hit him. you got to really, really grind to stay in good shape. I really got hurt then. Yeah, those, those rooms were like the fans in. A uh, little bit annoying. Especially when I got pushed in that web just then. That was... A little bit frustrating. Let's see if we can get our distance from this owl. Yeah, there's only two hits on the owl, which is nice at the moment. But we may actually... Um, we could actually find some harder sort of enemies in a little while. I think our ranger's cap is allowing us to throw our daggers a little bit further than usual. Let's blow that up. But these fakes... these, Yep, these chests are sometimes fake. They're mimics. And uh, Mimic Chest is something from Zelda, as far as I know. I've seen Mimic Chest in Zelda a few times, actually. So that's a nice little Zelda. That's a Zelda sort of, you know, shake, nodding the head at Zelda. You've inspired me to make this game. 
You know, bind and rise is kind of same, like on the same idea, but you know, there's no, there's no. Can't really have a go at someone for taking the genre and really moving it on. Like, of course, there's going to be some aspects of inspiration from it. I know it's not a rip, is it? You know, and there's kind of that vibe going on at the moment. I just want to clarify my stance on, you know, people saying this is this is like Bind and Rise. Like, oh, so you wasn't around in 1982, I guess, when Zelda was around. No, I wasn't. I was born in 1991. There we go. And that's that's like no way of offending anyone, but clearly, um, some generations that are younger than me go based on their existing knowledge of gaming when you know you can kind of go like calm down a bit you kind of who was not i'm not saying that not being around at that time when like zelda and like platforming games like that where you're looking down in your dungeons we're around but i'm just saying you kind of need to know your stuff before you start throwing opinions out there <laughs> no i'm saying boy okay so this room's pretty done Pretty done, makes no sense. That room is totally cleared. Oh no! Oh, I'm totally boosted. I put my totem down, yes. Oh, I'm getting annihilated right now. All I could do really is just stand there. I've got five health and I died, and we're gonna go into the spiritual realm, I guess. As you can see, the ghosts that were in this room originally are kind of here again. Gotta be very careful though. When you kill things in like the... Oh! Whoa! I guess we can call it the overworld. When you kill things in like the overworld, the life world, um, those souls become available in like death, dead sort of state. Do we have any more perks? Yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of like a, I'm I'm an angel lizard. That's that's kind of cool. <laughs> <clears throat> and you can kind of these souls in like the jars, glass thing. Um, you can collect them more often when you're in this kind of state, I guess. You're doing all right off my first run. This is literally my first run of playing the game. Um, I wanted to show you right from the very beginning. So we killed this guy as a zombie. Alright then. I thought if you killed him as a zombie, they turn into like ghosts, but I guess a zombie is already dead technically. <laughs> keep keep the zombies coming, we'll grind a little bit. We'll see how long we can last on here. <clears throat> if this video is gonna go quite a while, I'm probably just gonna upload it in one installation as well, guys, so. And we have we're all, we completed Cemetery 2, which is pretty awesome. We're on Cemetery 3 now. This is where the game actually gets a little bit harder. Maybe I should have explored some more of the dungeons as well. But as you can see, we're pretty beefy on the money right now. I mean, these and even these like torches when you break them, they only give you like 50 gold if they drop any gold there is. But you know that's kind of cool. Whatever. Let's go south. Yeah, I'm really digging this game. I like it. I think I'm taking it. I'm taking to this game like a duck to water. And then some of these guys, they die, but they turn into like a, into like a, you know, like a pile of bones right there. So I think they turn into a pile of bones. And then this could be a real chest or a fake one. It is real one, and we have battle mage boots so this could probably gonna enhance our um, our ability to do spells i guess i mean there's like a yeah there's like a 25 second cooldown on those totems too where are these coming from are you <clears throat> oh there we go they kept on coming from that bone pile okay that's the reason why you need to take those bone piles out because they just keep coming back uh, can we put a totem here? Nah, I'm still waiting on the cooldown for it, but it shouldn't be long. Okay, this should... Ouch! This should do a bit of destruction to them. Yeah, some of these zombies do turn into like... Oh man, I'm almost dead, but that's okay. I don't want to last forever on this run, of course. I just want to show you the beer mechanics of the game. Um... I'm really gonna have to try and grab a new mic stand because me having to look over the top of my microphone if I need to write, like, read any subtitles 
is getting a little bit frustrating for me and oh yeah we totally took out that bat and sometimes when I do like co-ops like friends and stuff it is really hard especially doing battlefield as well <laughs> playing battlefield with friends on minecraft or I'm constantly looking over or around my microphone it's really kind of annoying boy so there we go you just clean clear the rooms and the good stuff happens. Anything interesting in here? Nope, but I'm gonna blow the Arab straight away. Whoa! Yep, let's put that straight down. I think the totes might have... Oh! Yeah, there's like a werewolf too and it kind of like... follows you. I wanna blow that up. Oh, I missed. Yeah, the werewolf man, he totally teleports around. Oh no! I got 10 health left! Maybe we could possibly get some cheeky damage by here. Oh, he teleported! Yep. So that's one enemy I kind of need to keep my eye out for in future. But then again, there we go guys. That is it. This is the wizard's lizard. I've been calling it the Lizard's Wizard for a bit and my brain is not quite digesting it. But as you can see, we got some treasure, new items found, new monsters killed, townsfolk saved, none unfortunately. We got, but we got some blueprints here, which is pretty awesome. So on our next run, um, it is going to give us some nice perks to try out. So thanks for watching, guys. So here we go. You can see at the bottom is Grand Tally, which is pretty awesome. I don't think there's any... Yeah, it's way too early to unlock any achievements. But anyway, guys, I want to say thanks for watching. Make sure you tune out next, tune in next time for some more Wizards Lizard. I think I'll call this episode one, even though it was kind of like you know a bit more formal explanation of the game. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be able to save the Wizard at some point and test out some of the new weapons in the game that you can get. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this game, of course, and there's characters. I mean, let me just click on play very quickly. We're going to go back, but there we go. This is like a werewolf guy by here. Um, there's a guy who looks like Kenny at South Park. <laughs> okay, that's it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel, of course. My name is Juicy Pixel, and peace out.